Hey guys, it's Jackie and welcome back to the channel. Today I just wanted to do a follow-up video on a video that I did last year on using a capture card to record and monitor your camera on your iPad. Well, back last year I was explaining that I had a limited budget and I was trying to find a way to record the back LCD of my Fujifilm X-T5 for instructional videos. I wanted to be able to record what I was seeing on the back of the LCD without having to just try to hold my iPhone and try to record the back of the camera screen. So I wanted to just get a full view of the LCD screen that I was seeing. After a little bit of research, I found that I could get a very inexpensive capture card and I'll share a link for the one that I bought last year that's still working great for me and uh, an HDMI cable and I was able to get the output of the back of my camera to show up here on my iPad. The app is called Cam X and you can get it in the App Store. It's free. There's no cost to use the app at all. You can choose, of course, on your camera whether or not you want to display all of the information that's being shown on your LCD screen. You could record this, you could record this screen here where you've got the normal view that you're, you're seeing when you're um, taking a photo or recording video. And some new things that they've added to the app I will show you in just a minute. But first, I just wanted to show you how easy it is to get this to work. So if I shut off the camera and I just unplug it, I get a message here that just says you need to connect an HDMI to USB capture card for this device. So if I plug this in, turn on the camera, it'll just pop right back on. Last year, I was having problems where it forced me to reboot the iPad and that was the third gen 12.9 iPad Pro, which was the first one that had the USB-C port. I was having issues with that USB-C port. And I, I wonder if other people maybe that were using the third gen might have had similar issues as well. I could not get it to work reliably all the time. I could get it to work, but just not reliably. I had issues with that iPad where Apple had to replace it in 2022 about oh a year and a half after I had bought it because it just wouldn't charge anymore from the USB port. That may be part of my problem that I had with using the capture card in the CamX app. And since then, CamX has improved their app. And then also, I'm using the iPad Pro M4 now, and I'm having no issues at all with the exact same capture card that I had last year. Every time I plug in the capture card now, it just works flawlessly. So let's dig in and I'll show you some things that I've learned since the last video. If I wanted to record what I'm seeing on the back of my screen here, I just press this little red button and it starts recording. Right? Now I'm not capturing the information at the very bottom of the screen and at the very top of the screen, and some of that you can configure in the settings. But what it's capturing is everything that is in this rectangle here, which is exactly what I would want. So if I stop, it saves that to my photos on the iPad. And then that syncs up to the cloud, so I have it in the cloud as well. You can make all of your selections here of where you would like things to go. They have a general where you can choose whether you're doing videography or gaming. So when you're doing videography, you can choose whether what information you want to show at the top, whether you want system information or brightness and volume. So you can get the volume and the brightness there. I prefer to see the system information. You can also auto hide it as well, which if you tap on it, Everything, all of that gets hidden, even if you're recording, right? So I'm recording, if I tap on this, I'm still recording, but you don't get to see that it is recording. So I personally keep that auto hide off. I like to see what's all going on on here. You can choose your image format. You can use the volume button for image capture. You can also just press the camera icon down here on the bottom of the screen and that will 
take a shot and it takes a capture of the screen. If you wanted to see what that would look like, you could go to your photos right here and you could see. So this is the shot that I got. So it does have a border on the side here because in the camera setup right now, I've got a three uh, two ratio for my images. I was doing, if I switch this over to movie mode, so now we're on movie mode. Let's go back to the Camex app. There you go. So now you can see on the Camex app here, you've got a full screen because I'm in movie mode. So I'm getting a 16 by nine ratio here. A couple of other nice things that you can do here is pick whether you want uh, 264 or H265 as your encoder. You can choose whether or not you want to record the audio that is coming from the camera or the audio that is being picked up by the iPad mic. And you can choose where your storage location is. And that's just all under the general. If you go to the device, you can choose whether or not you want compressed or raw. Okay, so the raw only gives you like a five uh, frames per second. So that's not going to be usable. I've tried that. So I keep it on compressed. The highest I can get with this capture card is 1920 by 1080. My frames per second, I can choose whether I want 30 frames a second, 24 frames a second. You can change the rotation. You can change the mirroring. Pass through speakers, that's if you want the speakers um, that the camera's picking up to come out out of the um, iPad speakers. I choose to keep that off because you just get a bunch of echoing. And then the type, an external USB, that's where the signal's coming from. And it's a USB video, that's my only choice. And then I can choose whether I want the microphone to be from the camera or from the iPad. And another handy feature that they have on here now that they didn't last year was this reload button. If you tap that, it just refreshes everything. So if your camera shuts off and you have to turn it back on and it doesn't pick up the signal right away, you can hit that reload and it just reloads everything. And then finally here, you've just got some help files, a way to rate the app, and then also how to reset all of the settings on the app. But it's very easy to use and I, I have found it's been a fantastic way to record the back of my screen here. It's also a really nice monitor as well if you don't have an external monitor or you say you're using the X-T5 and you, are, you don't have a flip out screen. So you can plug this in and I could put this on the table if I was using the X-T5 to record and I could see myself without any problems and I can even remove all of the display on the screen. Of course, I'm on a video mode right now, so it's that's always going to be there. But if we switch back to stills, we can choose to have no display at all. And I like the fact that it just tells you everything right up here. And there's very little delay, really. It, it's hardly noticeable at all. So I'm real happy with that as well. Another nice feature of this is that you don't even have to plug this into your iPad. You could plug this into your MacBook Pro and you could use QuickTime to go ahead and record the output that you're seeing on your LCD to a file on your computer. You don't even have to use the iPad. The iPad's handy though if you want to monitor your output and you would like to record some instructional videos like especially if you wanted to show uh, menus, right? So you're, you want to be able to show everybody what you're doing here on the menu. You could just record and show the whole thing, right? Stop that. And you can see it's recorded exactly what I was doing. It's nice and crisp and clear. It's HD and it works for my purposes. One other thing I wanted to mention is uh, when I did buy the M4 iPad, I did a video about why I chose the M4 and if you're interested in 
watching that. I'll put a link in the description. But I love this case that I got, and I'll put a link for that in the description as well. I was a diehard Zugu case fan, and I used that for my last iPad. But I have to say, I really like this one because this one is magnetic, and you can just pull this off when you want to just use it in your hands without all this extra weight here. When you want that stand, you're good to go. You have all of these different angles that you can put it at. You can even go and flip this top part down and get a really, really low angle that if you just wanted to do some typing. I really like this case. It was totally worth what I paid for it, and I think it's just great. I love the fact that I can just take this off whenever I want to. That's little Henry. That's what he does. He hides pretty much most of the time. And occasionally I'm able to capture a picture of him. This capture card is less than $25 at the time I'm recording this. And I've been using it for about eight months. I haven't had any problems with it at all. If you're interested in watching the original video that I did about the Camex app and recording on my iPad, I'll put a link for that in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.